God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Great Saint of God, Bartholomew, Apostle now enthroned above, our lowly supplications here, accept our hymn of praise and love. He whom the prophets had foretold, foreshadowed too in many ways, the great Messiah come at last, smiled back to greet your joyous gaze. Apostle and close friend of Christ, who rules beyond the chain of time, you share in joy your Master's life and help us from that haunt sublime. To him be glory and all praise, who by your help and loving prayer will grant that we in heaven's home your everlasting joy may share. Their voice has gone out to the limits of the earth, their words to the ends of the world. The heavens proclaim the glory of God, and the firmament shows forth the work of his hands. Day unto day takes up the story, and night unto night makes known the message. No speech, no word, no voice is heard, yet their span extends through all the earth their words to the utmost bounds of the world. There he has placed a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom coming from his tent, rejoices like a champion to run its course. At the end of the sky is the rising of the sun. To the furthest end of the sky is its course. There is nothing concealed from its burning heat. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Their voice has gone out to the limits of the earth, their Their words words to the the ends ends of the world. They proclaimed what God has done for us. They grasped the meaning of his deeds. Hear my voice, O God, as I complain. Guard my life from dread of the foe. Hide me from the band of the wicked, from the throng of those who do evil. They sharpen their tongues like swords. They aim bitter words like arrows to shoot at the innocent from ambush, shooting suddenly and recklessly. They scheme their evil course. They conspire to lay secret snares. They say, Who will see us? Who can search out our crimes? He will search who searches the mind and knows the depth of the heart. God has shot them with his arrow and dealt them sudden wounds. Their own tongue has brought them to ruin, and all who see them mock. Then will all men fear. They will tell what God has done. They will understand God's deeds. The just will rejoice in the Lord and fly to him for refuge. All the upright hearts will glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. They proclaimed what what God has has done done for us. They grasp the meaning of his deeds. God's holiness was revealed by them. All nations saw God's glory. The Lord is King. Let earth rejoice. Let all the coastlands be glad. 
Cloud and darkness are his raiment, his throne justice and right. A fire prepares his path. It burns up his foes on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth trembles at the sight. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The skies proclaim his justice. All peoples see his glory. Let those who serve idols be ashamed, those who boast of their worthless gods. All you spirits worship him. Zion hears and is glad. The people of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you indeed are the Lord, most high above all the earth, exalted far above all spirits. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the souls of his saints. He sets them free from the wicked. Light shines forth for the just, and joy for the upright of heart. Rejoice, you just, in the Lord. Give glory to his holy name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God's holiness was, was revealed, revealed by, by them. them. All, All nations saw God's glory. They proclaimed the Lord's praises, told of his power to save. And of the wonders he had worked. From the first letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. Men should regard us as servants of Christ and administrators of the mysteries of God. The first requirement of an administrator is that he prove trustworthy. It matters little to me whether you or any human court pass judgment on me. I do not even pass judgment on myself. Mind you, I have nothing on my conscience, but that does not mean that I am declaring myself innocent. The Lord is the one to judge me, so stop passing judgment before the time of his return. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and manifest the intentions of hearts. At that time, everyone will receive his praise from God. I have applied all this to myself and Apollos by way of example for your benefit. May you learn from us not to go beyond what is set down so that none of you will grow self-important by reason of his association with one person rather than another. Who confers any distinction on you? Name something that you have not received. If, then, you have received it, why are you boasting as if it were your own? At the moment you are completely satisfied you have grown rich. You have launched upon your reign with no help from us. Would that you had really begun to reign, that we might be reigning with you. As I see it, God has put us apostles at the end of the line, like men doomed to die in the arena. We have become a spectacle to the universe to angels and men alike. We are fools on Christ's account. Ah, but in Christ you are wise. We are the weak ones, you the strong. They honor you while they sneer at us. Up to this very hour we go hungry and thirsty, poorly clad, roughly treated, wandering about homeless. We work hard at manual labor, when we are insulted, we respond with a blessing. Persecution comes our way. We bear it patiently. We are slandered and we try conciliation. We have become the world's refuse, the scum of all. That is the present state of affairs. 
I am writing you in this way not to shame you, but to admonish you as my beloved children. Granted you have ten thousand guardians in Christ, you have only one Father. It was I who begot you in Christ Jesus through my preaching of the gospel. I beg you then, be imitators of me. I no longer call you servants, but my friends. For I have shared with you everything I have heard from my Father. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven have been revealed to you. Blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For I have shared with you everything I have heard from my Father. From a homily on the first letter to the Corinthians by St. John Chrysostom, Bishop. It was clear through unlearned men that the cross was persuasive. In fact, it persuaded the whole world. Their discourse was not of unimportant matters, but of God and true religion, of the gospel way of life and future judgment. Yet it turned plain uneducated men into philosophers. How the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and his weakness stronger than men. In what way is it stronger? It made its way throughout the world and overcame all men. Countless men sought to eradicate the very name of the crucified, but that name flourished and grew ever mightier. Its enemies lost out and perished. The living who waged a war on a dead man proved helpless. Therefore, when a Greek tells me I am dead, he shows only that he is foolish indeed. For I, whom he thinks a fool, turn out to be wiser than those reputed wise. So too, in calling me weak, he but shows that he is weaker still. For the good deeds which tax collectors and fishermen were able to accomplish by God's grace, the philosophers, the rulers, the countless multitudes cannot even imagine. Paul had this in mind when he said, The weakness of God is stronger than men. That the preaching of these men was indeed divine is brought home to us in the same way. For how, otherwise, could twelve uneducated men who lived on lakes and rivers and wastelands, get the idea for such an immense enterprise? How could men who perhaps had never been in a city or a public square think of setting out to do battle with the whole world? That they were fearful, timid men, the evangelist makes clear. He did not reject the fact or try to hide their weaknesses. Indeed, he turned these into a proof of the truth, what did he say of them? That when Christ was arrested, the others fled, despite all the miracles they had seen, while he who was leader of the others denied him. How then account for the fact that these men, who in Christ's lifetime did not stand up to the attacks by the Jews, set forth to do battle with the whole world once Christ was dead? If, as you claim, Christ did not rise and speak to them and rouse their courage. Did they perhaps say to themselves, What is this? He could not save himself, but he will protect us. He did not help himself when he was alive, but now that he is dead, he will extend a helping hand to us. In his lifetime he brought no nation under his banner, but by uttering his name we will win over the whole world. Would it not be wholly irrational even to think such thoughts, much less to act on them? It is evident, then, that if they had not seen him risen and had proof of his power, they would not have risked so much. We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and an absurdity to Gentiles, but to those who have heard his call. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. We are afflicted in every way possible, but in all of these trials the victory is ours because of Christ who loves us. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. You are God, we praise you. You, you are, are the Lord, Lord we, acclaim we acclaim you. You, you are, are the eternal, eternal Father, all creation worships you. 
to you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not spurn the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death, and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. Lord, sustain within us the faith which made St. Bartholomew ever loyal to Christ. Let your church be the sign of salvation for all the nations of the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.